Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming back. This is the All Meat Hold the Anchovies podcast. First, thank you for recording later in the week to allow for my pre-trip preparation on Monday night. But you have a you have a monumental task in front of you. What is that? You have nothing to talk about? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's don't. Let's, no, that's repetitive. No. Um, <laughs> you you have to keep me awake because oh. I just drove in from Pennsylvania this morning, and then oh, I got home goodness. in time. To, after unloading the vehicle for all the folks we took, which we can talk about later, uh, went to a soccer match because Gracie's high school team that I used to coach went to a regional quarterfinal. So I just got home from that, sw- wow. scarfed down my dinner, saw the dinner you scarfed down, and then all of us. Okay, so let's 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 give it your best shot there, Dwayne. You know, let's well, I have a couple of things. Okay. First of all, since we didn't start with my story. Uh, <laughs> Which is fine. Oh, might as well tell people we have a Facebook group because we haven't mentioned it in like eight weeks. So it's facebook.com slash group slash all meet. What do you mean we? Well, I haven't. David, I have a couple of things okay. that you can choose from. Okay. <laughs> I love when you give me multiple story. One of them's kind of weird that has to do with me in bed. Okay. One of them <laughs> is that is that all meat after dark? <laughs> <laughs> then, then there's another one that's kind of supernatural, like the ring camera stuff. And then a much longer topic, but very good, is a headline that I recently read. Ooh, which is what I was going to start the show with. So why don't I start with that? Yeah. Are you ready? The headline. Yeah. Okay. Here's a headline. This smart toilet recognizes your butt and analyzes poop for diseases. Do you know about this? No. <laughs> David a smart toilet. That smart toilet. It uses. Now I just want to warn. Okay. So you know that we have said like 20 episodes ago that occasionally on a rare occasion you may want to screen the show before your 12 year old listens to it right right so fair warning okay it uses an anus recognition system (laughs) it says you not only have unique fingerprints but you also have a unique anal print okay i i i I can buy that (laughs) so (laughs) what it does is it um you have to sustain yourself before you sit down I'm, I'm just picturing sitting there and and seeing lights come up from from different spots underneath you where it's yeah. running a scan across you while the toilet does take scans of the anal print it does not share those images to the user's cloud or doctors <laughs> <laughs> all right so here's the whole point the toilet recorded <clears throat> video of the urine of the user's urine and feces, which is then processed by algorithms that can determine urine stream time and volume, as well as a stool sample's viscosity, analyzes for various diseases and some forms of cancer. This is a smart toilet. And since two different people use the toilet, it has to use recognition. See? Right now we have four people using one toilet, so. Well. It's a lot more recognition. I guess we'd have to buy the extra memory. For, for I mean, what, what what would the smartphone app look like for this? <clears throat> <laughs> okay, so let's think about why this is a bad idea for a number of reasons. But one reason why this is a bad idea is, I mean, what if for some reason – You take drugs, and then the government finds out that you took codeine for your for your backache, and they think you're on something illegal because it was in your feces. And then feds come to your door, huh? What about that? So the first thing is, 
if you if the government's after you anyway, they're going to get you because of other testing capabilities. Secondly, you don't use your own toilet. <laughs> <laughs> you turn off the scanner before you sit down. Deactivate, deactivate, deactivate. You're like, you like clench really quick. Crud, I forgot to turn it off. <laughs> so you're sitting down. You're in the other room. Dwayne, bring me my phone. Hurry. <laughs> turn off the app. Turn it off. You know how your ring doorbell will give you a notification that someone's at your front door? <laughs> You'll get a notification that there's a ring over your toilet. There's there's someone on your toilet, and there's the picture. Oh, my goodness. Company coming over. Oh, that's... <laughs> hey, do you want this retinal scan before you leave? Because otherwise, it's just going to sit on my hard drive. I mean, I, I can give it to you. I can print it out for you if you want, or... Oh. I hadn't even thought about guests coming over. <laughs> Kiss comes over and goes, why is there a camera in the bottom of your toilet bowl? <laughs> why did the toilet bowl light up and go across my bottom as I sat on it? Why did it scare me? Why did it say declined when I failed to go to the restroom? <laughs> declined. Please hang up and try again. Please stand up and sit down again. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, this is ridiculous. What a ridiculous in invention. Oh. Somehow during all of that laughing, I reached 200% of my move goal today. <laughs> <laughs> so then if somebody goes and just stands up, uh -huh. at the, when they're finished and they flush, a printer on the shelf behind the rest toilet prints out a sheet of paper and shows all the marks you hit where you did not hit the toilet. Because <laughs> oh, it's a smart gosh. toilet. And it's not. You hit 93% of your target. Yeah, and it's not a laser or a inkjet. It's an old dot matrix. Oh, my goodness. We were watching something the other day, and it was a dot matrix printer, and I was trying to – what Davis and I? Oh, it was uh, Breaking Bad. And they um, – Oh, yeah. He was, he was getting some report, and it was he was getting a receipt for paying his, his uh, radiation uh, treatment. Yes. And he was getting that receipt. Yes, so, I remember and, that. And Davis was looking at that. I said, oh, dude, that's that's a dot matrix printer. <laughs> Yeah, he probably is. had no idea what you were talking about. And she stares at it while it's printing. He stares at it while it's printing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, she's like, you owe a lot of money. So I'm on the last season of it right now. Man, the last season is so different than the first ones. Why does it feel you different? Know? As in hurried or? No, 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 no. It's got a complete, it's just got a different feel to it. I mean, Walt is like, he's like bad guy now. I mean, yeah. the way he looks at his wife and, I mean, he's just like ruthless. He's ruthless now. So we're... we're he doesn't care a lick about, um, what's his name? Jesse? You know, his sidekick. Yeah, Jesse. Jesse. Yeah, he Thank doesn't you. give a lick about it. He manipulates Jesse so bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. he does it in the beginning too, but it's, uh, we're, the, we're almost at the end of the second season, which... I hope we don't spoil this for anyone, but if you haven't watched it, you know, I like the part where there's more revealed when people find out what's going on. And that comes at yeah. the end of season two. But it's um but he's showing signs of getting towards full Heisenberg. Like you're like yeah. you're seeing. You know, you can oh, start to full, see things. Yeah, he's but that's on. and that's what I that's what I like about it. But it's always for the same purpose. His goal is always the same goal since episode one all the way to the yeah. end of just to support well, that. Well, okay. No, 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 that's not true. Because at the beginning, Jesse even told him this in the last episode I watched. In the beginning, he needed $750,000 for his cert for his cancer. And that's what he was doing it for. And he said, okay, and I'm going to get out after that. But, and but, now he was just offered $5 million to get out. And he told Jesse, I'm raising an empire. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the, the storage room at the... Is it the storage room or is it at the car wash that he stores that pallet of of greenbacks? I remember that. Where he has that pallet mm. and it just Yeah, that's at a garage. At a garage. But it, in the beginning, in the first season, he does make like a grocery list of everything yeah. he's got to cover. And it does include for yeah. the family. And yeah. Uh, but yeah. And now it's just yeah. He's like, it's not to be the biggest meth dealer, it's not to be the richest guy on yeah. building an empire. All right. So was the finale of the first half of better call Saul really that good 
I've, I still haven't watched it yet because I've been gone for three days and I didn't have time. Oh my goodness, I didn't have time. So I got that to watch. I got Survivor. I don't know if I'm going to watch the Survivor finale. I already figured out who won. Oh, why so are you still watching that show? Because it's oh. still a show. But to be honest, I still haven't watched the finale of last season. But I enjoy this. I enjoy this season. I just don't get into the finale because it's kind of obvious. Yeah, I don't even so, like the season anymore. Just hearing Jeff Probst talks make, makes me go, oh. That's very true. That's very true. Yeah, we're podcasting about that now would not be as fun. Uh-uh. So, but we went to for three days. Is that the end of your toilet story? Yeah, it's pretty horrible. I'm sorry, people. It's, we can flush that one, but that but that was good. I really enjoyed that. That was fine. I mean, that, that picture's hilarious. That picture does go Can you go believe story. that? Okay, so I actually heard that on a podcast. So if someone happens to listen to the Mind Pump Media, Mind Pump Media, Mind Pump Media podcast, mm-hmm. that's where I heard about it. And I went and looked it up. How much is it? Oh, it's still in like production research stage. They oh, don't okay. actually sell it. Or I mean, this article was from two years ago, so I don't know what the mm. prognosis um, is on it now. We we took forty seven senior adults, Terry and I did to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Well, how but, what an appropriate transition. Yes, from anal scans to senior adults, but um, but it was fun. There's a lot of stuff we did. <laughs> But one thing we did was it's we get to make our own. Ever. We get to make our own ice cream at Turkey did Hill you really? Creamery. Yeah. Oh, well, God. it's not exactly. That's what they say. But you're making your own flavor. Is what you're making because they bring you like two cups of vanilla. It is soft serve creamy vanilla, and it's yeah. so funny because we're in a room with all these adults and a few other families, and and senior basically adults. senior adults. And but there's some other families too that are in there. It's a big oh. room, like a lab. And the guy's telling us, he says, there's three stages to this. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Don't get to the next stage until I explain it, and you'll enjoy the process more. You'll understand the process more. The first stage is the flavor extract. And this is exactly how Turkey Hill makes their ice cream. They take a vanilla base. They use a flavor extract, which is droplets. And you only do like five drops in your two cups of vanilla, or it'll overdo it. You know, uh-huh. and it's unless it's cotton candy that you can do more. But he's talking about, putting, <laughs> yeah, I know. Seriously, flavor is yeah, cotton candy flavor is weaker the drops. So he said you oh. can put it to fifteen. So everybody's putting their extract, and some people, I turn around. And there's a couple of guys just eating it as it is. I'm like, you're not supposed to eat it yet. <laughs> you're supposed to put your stuff in first. He's like, Mm-mm. just like this. I like it just like this. <laughs> I was like, they didn't hear what he said. They didn't. They didn't care. <laughs> But we did that. I did cherry, and then the second round is to is to get up and go put a item in it, like like caramel bites or cookie bites or or Skittles or something like that. And I did uh-huh. cupcake bits, which looked like a Lucky Charms marshmallow times three. Yeah, it was kind of neat. Huh. And then the last yeah. thing is to come back to your table and put a topping, which you could do raspberry, blueberry, any of those things, caramel stuff like that. So I did like a raspberry and blueberry mine, and it was pretty good. But it's funny because he kept saying this. Now, don't stir it too hard or too fast because you're going to melt it. Right. So so Which I was doing what I the, love to do with my ice cream. Yeah, especially when you got chocolate syrup in it. But I just mm. – I was just flipping it, doing it nice the way he was telling me to. I'm looking at Terry, and half her ice cream has gone. Every time she, she stirs it, she eats a bite. And she's looking around like – she looked at the guy and goes, can I get more? <laughs> He's like, no, that's all you get is one cup. No, but but it was it was fun. It was it was real neat. Um, just to make your own flavor. Have but you? it was funny watching how many people were eating before they even get through. And oh, then some. Yeah. Let me tell you one more thing. I looked down the road, and some okay. of the old folks have already added the third item. We're just finishing the first item. <laughs> they don't care. They don't care. They're just doing no. whatever they want. <laughs> They're like, why am I still stirring? Yeah. It's like I have made an, enough bowls of ice cream to know yeah. how to do what you're asking me to do. <laughs> really, I'm gonna put something in it like, oh, I don't know, chocolate syrup, yeah, you know, and I'm gonna put a topping on it. I don't know, like nuts and whipped cream. I know how to do this. Have you yeah, ever put honey? Have you ever put honey in vanilla ice cream? I want to say I have, but I can't remember it distinctively now. It's really cool because it because it freezes and it freezes? gets really hard. Yeah. Ooh, does it break up in bits or is it? No, no, no. It it doesn't get that hard, but oh, okay. it. it it, but it gets hard. It's really cool. 
it, it, in. So instead of it mixing with the ice cream like you would do, yeah. okay, I'm going to mix it with the ice cream. Instead, it's kind of like you have swirls of honey that are, Ooh. I don't want to say chewy, but it's just, it's has a consistency to it or a hardness to it that honey doesn't have. I mean, honey's liquid. Yeah. So. so that's something that doesn't really mix or evaporate too much in the ice cream. It stays, it keeps its shape. Keeps its consistency. No, it becomes a sh- it becomes thicker, thicker. Oh, so it it does take a little bit of the cold and become thicker with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's like if it was in there right. long enough, if it was cold enough, it would become hard. So it's right. not hard yet, but it's yeah. Remember that magic show stuff you used to like the chocolate syrup you used to put on top and it just hardens to the top of the ice cream. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Then I just eat the shell off and then just put the shell back on there again. Put the ice cream yeah. back in the freezer, let it freeze again, and yeah. bring it back out. Dairy Queen used to sell those. I don't know. Maybe they still do. The chocolate covers, yes, the like dip. they do the ice cream, and they pour the syrup on it, and the syrup freezes. No, they actually the dip it. Syrup. They dip it upside down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They dip. Oh, that's what Terry's favorite is, the caramel. Really? Yeah. Oh, they dip it in caramel, and the caramel, caramel. hardens? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, wow. it's, like, it's just like Magic Shell, but a, a much better flavored style. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. So I'm driving down the road. Mm-hmm. It was, I think it may have been this morning. Yeah, because I did a quick note and I said, remind me at five o'clock to tell David about this because I'll forget otherwise. Yeah. So it's like 5.15 in the morning, maybe 5.30. So 5.15 or 5.30 and uh, I'm driving down 72, down the road, and I'm in the left lane, and there's this big pink suitcase that I have to swerve to get around. Yeah. Right? And, I, and I'm and i driving, and I think, well, I'm just going to turn around and get the suitcase off the road so nobody gets hurt. Mm-hmm. All right? This is, like, not that far up the road that I'm deciding this. Okay? Yeah. It's dark, so there's headlights. Okay. I turn around, no one is stopped, traffic is flowing, there are no people around. I drive and I start looking to see where the suitcase is so I can move it. Mm -hmm. There is no suitcase. Okay. What happened to the suitcase? Really, you don't know? There, I saw it. Somebody and then it, it wasn't there. No, Somebody they did hit. not. They had to have hit it and knocked it off the road. Somebody hit it? They hit it with like their bumper. With their bumper or something. You a think so? That quickly after, but I didn't see it in a ditch either. It was dark. Anyway, I chose to believe that it was supernatural. It had to do with my <laughs> ring cameras. <laughs> 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 a, a pink vulture flew down and grabbed that suitcase. <laughs> it's like it it's truck. like I was go. It's like I was tripping or something, you know. Like uh, you know, and it's like whoa, there's a pink suitcase in the road, and there really wasn't. That's something that you'd see on Breaking Bad. As brown and every, as everything is, and as dark and as shady, all of a sudden, yeah. Pink suitcase. Well, that's well, funny because. Like yeah, the teddy bear the, at the uh-huh. beginning of season two, you get the burnt bear uh-huh. in the pool that we still have not seen the res- resolution from. So I'm hoping know. it's at the end. <clears throat> I forget. I it's been remember. a while. It's been a while. Since I've, it's been years since I've seen this. Oh man, you're gonna remember. I, I'm really excited about when Hank and Heisenberg are gonna meet up. That's what I, Heisenberger. I, I, Heisenberg. Heisenberg. Hank, Hank and Heisenberg meet up. I thought is what I said. Go back and listen. That's like the last season. I know, but I just, I just, that was so, yeah. oh my it gosh. It hasn't happened yet, happen. and I, I can't wait for it to happen. Yeah. Hank yeah, Flack sitting that. on the toilet, remember? I remember that, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, now I want to watch it again. I want to get to that part. So we're watching, i tell you about Bosch. You should watch Bosch on it. I, I think like it's on. Bosch. Oh, you, tr- you tried it? Uh, no. But you I know did try it. I did try anatomy of a what? Anatomy of a scandal. Yeah, we watched the first episode and Connie doesn't want to watch it. 
It's, it's not worth watching. If she didn't like the first episode, don't watch the rest. No, 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 no. It's excellent. But I think it had oh. too much extramarital affair or sex in it. Yes. So it was like, you know, nah. Yeah, that's a good reason not to watch it. So yeah. it was all right. It was well made, but it was just, yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hear anymore. Great. I don't want to hear anymore. I mean, they all die. So you just know, in case I decide. Oh man, I'm playing this game, Detroit, on Nathan's PS5. Yeah. Right. Which, by the way, I am going to get a PS5. You say that loud. Which, by the way, I am getting a PS5. Make sure she heard that. So, one one thousand, two one thousand. Connie's three, one, actually the one who suggested it. Okay, so because what I'm doing is I'm remoting in to Nathan's PS5, right? right? So I'm playing mm-hmm. his PS5. I'm playing this game, this game called Detroit. It was actually made for the PS4, mm-hmm. but I mean, but it's amazing. It's like seriously, this came out four years ago, because this is incredible. And it follows these three androids that become self-aware, right? And mm-hmm. you play them. But, David, you could play this game a hundred times and it never be the same. Because you are con- – I mean, it's like you're in a situation and you've got two to four different options. Have I already told you this? I think so, but it's funny because David's just found a very similar game. I did. I remember I told you it did. to you. I don't remember last three episodes, episode. but I remember that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I finished the game my first time playing it, and everybody got killed. So it, it <laughs> got over. Nathan goes, You're done with the game already? And I said, Yeah, everybody died. And he goes, Dad. <laughs> Wait, all three robots died, or, or just. Oh, the- yeah. All three androids died. It was like I took the revolution approach where the androids. We're going to have a revolution. And just one by one, my people got killed. <laughs> so, including the lady with the young girl. So the young girl got shot too. Mm. Everybody got shot. Everybody died. It was terrible. So I'm going to play it again. Davis just found a game similar to that where you start off in this room and you have to go find what happened. You're in an office space. And uh-huh. I think you liked it because it reminded him of the office, but you're in this space and you're alone, but you can tell people have been there. So I said, so what is it like the rapture or something? Did you, did you miss it? That's he goes, no, missed. I have to go find what's happened. And there's a narrator that when Dude, he, gonna... when you get to one room or the other, you know, most the conference room you're going to is in the left door. What, so, ca- what consoles is on? He asked me what I would do. I said, go to the right door. He goes, this is not the way to the conference room, but let's see where it goes. You yeah. know, and it's, <laughs> let me it ask him. It's like an updates. older game, though. It's, it it kind of like looks an like an older game. game but a, but a, he's something he downloaded. I think it was free. Um, yeah, I was going to say, that, that sounds like an older game. Yeah. So I'm laying in bed two nights ago, and I realize what I do in bed. Oh, and I was like, you don't. You don't sleep? Well, not immediately, right? (laughs) So let's say, because this is when I noticed it. I've noticed it before, but I've never really thought about it. I think what happened was I did it, and then I thought, oh, my goodness, I do this? I got to tell David on the podcast. That's what happened, (laughs) right? So let's say I get up. Well, no, anytime. If I get in the bed and I put my head on the pillow, have you ever seen a cat get in bed and just kind of need them need and stuff like yeah. that before they settle in? Mm-hmm. I like my whole body. I like, you know, I kind of like you I push into the in, bed. I settle in bed. like a cat. It is the weirdest thing. It's like I can't just lay down on the bed and I'm laying on the bed. I lay down on the bed and I have to kind of wiggle. Wiggle sounds now, weird. Now, is this a body thing or around. a head? I kind of move thing. around. No, my whole body. I kind of move oh. it around to kind of get settled. It's like I'm settling in my spot until I'm just perfectly comfortable. And if I turn over in bed, I do the same thing. Anytime I move to a new position, <laughs> I settle into that position. <laughs> and I noticed it the other night. I was like, what, what am I doing? <laughs> Why do I do this? 
what has happened in my life that, that when I lay down in bed, I settle in the bed like a, I don't know. I don't okay. know. Man. So weird. speaking of, of weird bed confessionals. So oh, this when is I'm, when interesting. I, when I'm, I'm laying on my, the podcast talking about weird bed confessions. When I'm laying on my side, that time yes. we talked about weird podcast or bed confessionals. If I'm laying on my side and I'm warm, I'm hot, like the oh, fan's been yeah. turned off or something, I and I want to roll over, I uh-huh. don't want the sheet under me to move with me. So wow, okay. So I, I hop, I <laughs> launch myself off the bed. And probably about a fraction of an inch when I think it's three, four inches, it's probably a fraction of an inch. But I launch and I flip myself over like an omelet. And I'm all on my in other one shoulder. shot. All yes. in one shot. It, well, if, if I really thought about covers? it, if I really thought about it, I think I actually pushed down and launched like a, like you're supposed to do with your knees when, in a basketball yeah. game. Yeah. And I think I pushed down and launched myself over and I'm on my other side. The top covers. Either I've pushed them down or they're they're not as sticky to me, I guess. I may have oh, pushed I, them down. I have a solution about the top covers. But I think ahead, I pushed them me. down to my waist, but I can flip myself over. And the funny thing is. <laughs> that doesn't I, wake up Terry. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I, I, my thought is I, I'm comfortable. And then I hear this movement beside me like, yeah, I just woke her up. I, yeah. It's like anything I do well, towards the David, bed, I, I wake her up. No, David, you can't flip however much you weigh 200 something pounds or whatever and then expect it not to wake her up actually i think i use my it's usually when i go from my right to my left i think i use my left hand to, to push up and ooh, just like that yeah i can just sit in the chair why don't you I, go to your bed and try it and see what you do and then come back and tell <laughs> i should i should get her to videotape it and um <laughs> but, but okay you need to tighten your bottom sheet what the, look, what the now hell look, now look when i flip it's not like that person jumping off a diving board onto a giant pillow where the other person flies off. I'm not doing that to her, so I'm not going to bounce her out of the bed. I'm a big guy. Well, but I, it's, sure. I, I think I stay close to the bed when I do it, and I, I just don't want the bottom sheet to move. And it doesn't move. So I don't know when I started flipping myself in the air, but I do this. And it's the Wait, weirdest okay. thing, but it works. This is what's happened. You don't even need to do that anymore. What's happened is – at some point in your life, the bed sheets hadn't been changed for two weeks, let's say two weeks. And so the bottom sheet had kind of lost its grip and it was really loose. And you started turning over and the sheet goes with you and it messes up everything. And so you started this habit. And now you do this habit, whether you need to or not. I bet if you were in a bed without a bottom sheet on it, you'd still turn over like that. Oh, definitely. I like it. Yeah, yeah. It's that's quick. how you do it. That's it's how you quick do and it. easy. It's yeah. Okay. It's like turning the page. So here's how you keep your your top covers. Okay. So like I sleep on the right side of the bed. Okay. So if you're in bed facing the end of facing the, like you're sitting up in bed to read, yeah. I'm on the right side. I'm on Connie's the left. on the left. So if I'm laying down and I'm facing Connie, and I want to roll over like you do, except without flipping and making Connie jump out of the bed and land on the floor. Yes. If you do that wrong, then all those sheets come with you on top and they come off of her. And then she goes, I need my, stop taking my sheets, you know, like any person would do. Right. So what you do is you're, you're laying down on your left side, you reach over and you grab the sheets where it's you grab the sheet where where it's going to be whenever you end up right so I'm, you're laying on your left side you go across and you grab that sheet right okay and then you pull it over in front of you and then when you roll over you you're still holding on to it and it ends up where you are or you can just lift your sheet up and turn over that might be easier <laughs> i think i think i lift my sheet up and push it towards her so that when I yes. flip, because I'm always flipping away that's from That's what her. I just said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, well, you, you were saying, saying. direct Go ahead and you're rolling yeah. backwards because I can't tell which way you're talking about. Yeah. But that's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah. I push the so sheet you reach her. over your body, you grab the top <clears throat> sheets, and she's you pull on, it over. Okay. So she's on that side of you. No. She's, okay. Which side is she no. on? If you're facing her, 
right? Okay, so you're facing so her you, right now. You reach okay. over to your back and you grab the sheet because that's where that part of the sheet, that's where you want that part of the sheet after it. you roll yes. over. Right. Gotcha. So then you pull it back over in front of you so that when you roll over, you don't let go of it. And it ends up there and your wife doesn't complain about you taking the sheets. You mean flip over. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> what did I say? You said roll over, which is probably what you do. Oh, yeah, but we flip over. <laughs> we flip. We, we bought this uh, quilt comforter thing mm -hmm. and it's so long. I cannot stand this. It's so long on both sides that it's like, I don't know, six inches from the floor. Yeah. So it's. So when you're laying in bed, there's no, oh man, I'm so far away from the microphone. I'm sorry. So when you're laying in bed, it like, it, it weighs you down over on that side of the bed, you know, yeah. on the side of the bed. Oh my gosh. And I can't I stand that. that. It's so hot when it, when that happens. It's hold. it's like trapping you down on the bed. It's yes. It's, it yes. Is. I understand exactly what you're saying. Okay. Let me ask you this. How often do you flip your pillow? Bef while sleeping, while in bed. Oh yeah. Mm, if it's I, if I wake up, but usually I it's in the morning. Mine all the time. Every t I mean, I might roll over or flip over, and raise my head up and flip my pillow and put my head back down because it's cool. That side of the pillow is cool. Also, your pillow when you lay on it, you know, it starts to get flat on the side yes. that you're laying on. So if you yes. flip it, boom, it's nice and big and fluffy again. Now I have one of those pillows that is cool on one side. How does but that even work? It's does like it, this, is it there's actually a, there's cool? A, there's a scanner on the bottom of the pillow. It scans your, your head. <laughs> You're hot. You need to get cool. I'll tell you this much. It's not doesn't work as great as the box lets you think it does. Oh, none of them do. It's I like <laughs> this bed cover will radiate coolness to you really how's that possible yeah it's like you put your you put your head, hand on it with the store and it feels really cool you put your head on it, it's cool about two hours later you wake up and you sweat it into it and, and and then you read the box and it says unless you have a large head or your body temperature exceeds this i don't know what it was but actually we have your body um, temperature is 98.7 too bad yeah but we have my pillows now and we yeah. um and they're not obviously cool on one side, but I, I do flip it, especially in the summer. Probably, I'd say on average twice a night, usually later in the night before I actually yeah. fall asleep, and then in the morning. I, I have a my pillow. pillow. Do you? I have a my pillow, I but two. I don't do the whole fluff it every time I use it thing like you're supposed to. Oh, no, I don't do that either. You know, you can wash those. You stick them in the washing machine. Uh -huh. Stick them in the dryer, and they come out like three times bigger than they normally are, and they're oh, still really? comfortable. They're still comfortable that. when you first pull them out. So yeah. I like mine. I don't think Terry Terry didn't get into hers, so I actually have hers because she got a smaller one compared to the thickness of the hardness of the one I wanted. I like a more stiffer, yeah. firm pillow. She like it softer. What else do I do in bed? It's weird, or maybe not weird. I, I well, can't stand. Ask Connie. Yeah. I can't stand waking up and being sweaty. Oh, oh I can't ugh. yuck. It's like, because it, oh, you're I sitting there and he's like, all. these sheets have to be washed in the morning because I'm not getting back in these sheets again. You know, right. if you wake up and you're sweaty. Right. Now, folks, we're not talking about like drenched sheets, but, you know, they're damp wherever been you're there. sweating. Like the pillow, you know, like your head's sweaty or hot because it's so yeah. blasted hot in the room. Yeah. So anyway, I'm trying to think. Oh, did you know? I don't know if Davis and Bailey and Gracie do this, but my two younger boys, mm -hmm. they don't sleep with top sheets. They sleep under the quilt, but they don't use top sheets. And I was like, why? And they go, nobody does. Nobody does. According to them, people don't sleep with top sheets anymore. One of mine does sleep with a quilt like that it's a it's just a blanket they just like having the blanket now davis uses yes. the top sheet because i think he, he, gets, no he gets warm because he's upstairs and you've stayed upstairs he gets warm if it doesn't have good airflow or the ac's not on but actually he only sleeps in a top sheet he doesn't okay. use a blanket but then the girls i think like the blanket isn't that weird 
Since I mean, how did that even happen? How does that all of a sudden? How does that all of a sudden become a thing with college students or whatever? Oh, attention, college students! From now on, all college students do not sleep with the top sheet, only the cover. You know what? My boys were laughing at me. When the when when the first day when the mom makes the bed for the college student, they put the bottom sheet and then the top sheet, and then they lay the child's chosen favorite quilt on top. By the time the child goes to bed tired, all they see is the quilt. They don't even see the sheet. They just get another. They're too tired to pick up the sheet. Probably it also makes it easier to make the bed. I would guess. You know, there's nothing to make. You just throw the sheet across. Throw the quilt over. So, so I'm like making their bed. Like they're coming over, right, to the house, (laughs) and I'm Mm -hmm. making their bed. And like, Dad, and this is before I knew it. Dad, we don't use top sheets. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. How was I supposed to know this weird oddity? (laughs) So you're putting your nasty feet on my quilts? I don't think so. David. So we will we will require a top sheet and a <laughs> quilt on top when we come over. Yeah. Well, I'll be on the left side, so I'll need it. By the way, I only have queen size beds. I don't have king size beds. That's all we have is queen size. That's all you have? Yeah. I don't need a king size bed. Actually, what the queen's got a king size bed. bed for. Yeah. I mean, I don't I got plenty of room. I don't need a king size bed. All right, so let me ask you this. Does Connie read it all before she falls asleep? And uh she gets on her phone. Oh, so like, so like she 95% of the time she goes to bed after me, right? She well, gets just, in bed after you. Oh, no, like I'll be asleep and she'll she'll come to bed later. Hey, Connie, uh, you used to like get on Facebook or stuff like that when you got in bed on your phone. Do you still do that or do you just come in and go to sleep? You just go to sleep now? Okay. Used to be I would wake up or something and her phone would be like on under the covers and she'd be dead asleep, and her phone would be on as she fell asleep looking at her. So in our room, Terry leaves her end table light on because it's the farthest light in the room, which allows you to walk into the room when it's not too dark. Yes, yes, So if I go to bed and she's starting something in the den, like Netflix or something, I will turn that light off. You better believe it because I like like darkness. But then she says, you know, I got to come in. I got to see. And I'm like, honey. Your clock is like six inches high with blue numbers on it. Uh-huh. That's like a night. Because when I turn everything off, all I see is like a light show of this clock on the wall. Yeah. Like it's so bright. It's a night light. And then one night she went to bed before me. She was tired. I was up for some reason. And I came in and she turned all the lights off. And it's and she's right. It's pretty. <laughs> when you come well, from yeah. the lit hallway. Yeah. Dark, your eyes aren't adjusted. So now. I tell you I, what. But I can fall asleep what? with her lamp on now. I just. Either oh, turn the other I, way I or I can't stand it. it. I can't stand it. In fact, I I've gone through. I think it took me three um, chargers, the kind that you just sit your phone on. Yeah. The round things. It took me three of them to find one that uh, the light didn't shine bright. Oh yeah. So now the one I have, you can see the little light if you look, but it doesn't like. It doesn't. I don't know, project the light. It's just there, but it doesn't project the light. So it's not bright, which is pretty so, cool. It's funny. So I'll tell you this real quick because I know we're pushing our time here, but on this trip, Terry right, was the, I, I can cut out the anal scan stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Can't now. But on our trip, Terry is of course is the is the worship is the senior adult ministry secretary as well as the worship secretary but she um so she works for larry you know pastor larry larry riles oh my and goodness. um is he still there what is he 80 he, now something like that but uh still moving along he's great and yeah. um but she's like the question person if you got a question what time tomorrow what time yes. where are we going for this she's that person right. so so friday night we took him to a hibachi buffet oh it's called dragon hibachi buffet <laughs> And I told him, are you really taking senior adults to a to a buffet that's got sushi, it's got seafood, it's got all kinds of stuff? I'm like, my kids would kill for that buffet, and you're taking yeah. senior adults? He's like, yeah, because it's a variety and stuff. Well, it was a big hit. They loved it, and it was really oh, good. Yeah. However, it was a buffet. So the next morning, <laughs> the next morning, we have a buffet at Shady Maple Smorgasbord. It's a breakfast buffet. Oh, my goodness. You're, you're going to. 
kill these people. Even <laughs> even I was hesitant about going, but Bro, I'm a driver. We're gonna have heart attacks on the bus. So, <laughs> like like six of them didn't want to go to the breakfast buffet, which I completely understood. Yeah. And then overnight, apparently, for some reason, at 4:30 in the morning, my mom decided she didn't want to go to the buffet because she was on the trip too. And I don't 4:30 know. 4:30 in the morning. I don't know if her stomach woke her up, if she, it was stomach was that or something. So she texts Terry at 4:30. <laughs> to tell her we weren't coming. Then she texted me at, to tell me she wasn't coming. My phone, though, was not on the nightstand. It was charging over by the TV in the hotel room. Yeah. But it was buzzing. So I got up and I responded to her and I said, okay, but this is something you could have told me at 6 a.m. or at yes. least 630 not yes. I didn't say not 430, but I just kind of, I said, I love you, mom. I really do. I'm saying that in my head. I'm like, this is something you could have told me at six. And then she, she, she said, okay. I could tell she was afraid to say anything else. So <laughs> later that day after the breakfast buffet, she saw me and she goes, I didn't mean for you to read it at 430. I just wanted to text it to you because I was going back to bed. I said, yes. mom, my, what happens when your phone gets a text? It dings at you. She's got a hearing aid, so it dings at her ear. Yeah. I said, but mine was on vibrate because I just had it turned off and it buzzed on this table and then it buzzed again. I can't sleep if I know there's something buzzing. It could be yeah. my child. It could be somebody else. Who's texting me at 4.30 in the morning to tell me they're not going to breakfast? Right. I love my mom very much. But it was one of those yeah. things when, when you get a text and the light goes off and it's like, yeah. you're not going back to sleep. You know, the lights, light, that's why I put my phone down. Face down. Okay. <laughs> Let me show you something, dude. You swipe down on your phone. Uh, where Where is this? Maybe it's not on here. Yeah. Okay. It's called focus. Yeah. You see where it says focus? Yeah. So swipe right. down from the right side and it'll say focus. You can see one of the ones says focus. Which one says? See, you've it's, got a newer phone, so I don't have all this. This one. Oh, you don't? Flashlight? Oh, no, focus. No, no, okay, no. there's focus. focus. Okay, touch focus. Yeah. And then there's one that says sleep. Now I've got do not disturb. It's got a moon beside it. Yeah, you don't have personal sleep, driving, etc. No, this is an older. Well, actually, oh. this is on my iPad. My phone's in the other room. Oh, it, it'd be on your phone. And so then you select sleep. Okay. And now in the middle of the night, it's not going to buzz at It'll... you or anything like that. Bailey just does gonna that when sit she's there. Dri- yeah, Bailey does it when she's driving. I'm driving right oh, now, I so I'll get this later. Oh, I can't. No, I'm not doing that. I want to hear my text messages. I have Siri. If, I have CarPlay. But the only people that are going to text me in the middle of the night is either the hospital or family. Oh, that's true. So it's like I need to hear that. I but, understand okay. what these are for. But, okay, so, like, if my son needed me and he kept texting me, like, two or three times, it would go through. It would be like, okay, because I have it set up where if it's like two or three times in a row from the same number, that it'll. Yeah. Yeah. Is that one of those things that shows up notifications are off on the other end when they'll text you? Yes, it, it would say okay. notifications are off. My son can, keeps that on all the time. And then you could say, yeah, I think Davis is starting to do that too. And then you could say notify away or something. You can keep notify anyway, which I don't yeah. know what that does whenever you do that. It, it, I think it does this on your screen. It makes it wiggle. <laughs> oh, I wonder. I'm going to put you, mine on do not disturb. Hold on. And then you're going to text me. Okay. Okay. Text me. Let's see what it says to you. This is delivered. It doesn't say on there that I'm on do not disturb. No. Yeah, and there you are. It says disturb right below the butt cheek. Um, I wonder how you do that then. Let's, Let's see. see. Do not disturb on personal. No, that's not it. All right, text me back. Text you back. Okay. Text me back as we do this on the podcast. I don't unless, care. Unless you take it up. We're over 46 minutes. Who cares? Okay. But no, it, it doesn't say yours is on do not disturb. Okay. Now it says Dwayne has notifications silenced. Now it says it does? that. So let I me... don't have them silenced anymore. I unsilenced them. Oh, no, I do have it on. And it says. 
What did it do? <laughs> it makes mine bigger and shakes it. You have never seen that? Okay. All right. So text me. I did. Okay. Text me again. Okay. So I see it and it beat. But it didn't do anything to you? It, it only let me do the first. It told me that Dwayne has notifications silenced. And, and then you selected notify anyway. Well, that, see, you, you jumped ahead before I knew what you were doing. Okay. Interesting. All right. Now text me. I've done the same thing. By the way, thank you for listening. We know you're not listening anymore. Okay. What the heck? Why is my phone? My stop. Because your notifications me. are turned off or something. What does it say? Nothing. All right, try it again. It didn't say my notifications are silenced? Uh uh. Do you know what that is? Yes. <laughs> anyway, all right. Yeah, I'm gonna turn oh, my do not disturb off. I'm Tommy's gonna off. want. I'm, I see. I want to play that game. That, oh, we're gonna go to Nashville tomorrow. For what? And re- remember, those of you who are listening to this, this is we record like the week. Well, obviously, okay. We're we're recording on Thursday night before the Tuesday. Connie and I are going to Nashville because our anniversary, 31st anniversary, was yesterday. And so I am taking her to Nashville tomorrow. But we're like, you know what? We're going to spend the day with our kids. So we're going to go uh, go see Nathan and Taylor's new house that's about to be drywalled. So we're going to go. We get to see that, and which is always fun, seeing a house that's, that's being built. And then uh, we're going to go back to their house, eat some lunch. And we may or may not all four go out that night. It may just be me and Connie, but we may go ahead and take them too. Haven't decided. They said there's a spot in downtown Nashville that got live music and stuff. Of course, downtown oh, nice. Nashville has yeah. live music everywhere. Terry so. and Gracie went through there when Gracie was doing a theater job thing. And I think she went to the downtown area where all the lights were up and it was just music everywhere, like you said. Oh, yeah. There's so, like yeah. bars with music everywhere. So. Anyway, all right, man. All right, bud. So that's all I got. How about you, David? I'm good. All right. See you. See you.